story of the Mizuzu Shalom Zone in Malawi, Africa, is a wonderful success story of how one church was able to move from a local church outreach, doing the program by themselves, to get buy-in from other church groups in the community, Mizuzu University, government offices, business enterprises, and to say together, we can care for not 60, but maybe all 300 children that we've found. I'd like to introduce you to our partner, Reverend Copeland Nakata, pastor of the United Methodist Church of Mizuzu, a church that is dedicated to Jehovah Rapha, God my healer. Thank you for your partnership, my friend. Thank you so much. God bless you. All right. We'll be doing work together. Thank you. All right. Thank you. This tiny congregation that met in the middle of a cornfield with a hastily shanty kind of a wood structure with sun beaming through these wooden slats, the dirt floor that they swept very clean on Sundays, primitive wood pews. These 60 members of the congregation who had adopted 15 orphans were doing the best they could to worship God on Sunday and to care for those entrusted to their care during the week. And so uh, an international partnership began between the United Methodist Global AIDS Fund, World Hope Corps, City Hope International, and the Mizuzu United Methodist Church we provided some initial funding for what became known as Hope Homes and Hope Scholarships. Within six months, a group of 15 orphans had become 30. 30 then soon grew in the next year to 60 orphans in their care. Hope homes are basically extended families. They don't have a formal orphanage institutional approach to the issues of 900,000 orphans in Malawi, mostly due to AIDS. What they do is they find guardians or grandmothers or family members to care for not just five kids, but 10 kids or 15 children. And these Hope homes needed support they couldn't feed these additional children themselves. And so they were given a 115 pound bag of corn mixed with ground nuts, peanuts, to add nutrition to their diet. They're provided with school supplies and school uniforms, textbooks, sometimes bicycles, often school fees in secondary school. But once a month, these families bring their children to the church for what they call a picnic. Every child is God's child and has a, a need and a hope for nutrition and for good health, for safety, for a shelter, and for education. We say there are five hopes for every child. There's our food, there's our body. These are the children for UMC Hope Homes. We have registered 62 of them. However, between December and May, we have very terrible shortage of food. So we have been taking care of about 107 kids. Last week, we had distributed food to 125 children. So we're so grateful for all the, the funding that we received to keep the program running from month to month. scholarships then provide the educational support that these kids need to stay in school. So often kids drop out of school because of economic reasons. Sometimes uh, the boys are prioritized over the girls.
because girls are, are expected to work more and care for smaller kids. Plus, it's very expensive to go to secondary school. So they need scholarships to continue their education. Hope Scholarships has been able to fund at least 30 scholarships this past year from the United States or the countries. 30 children who would not be able to go to school unless they had such provision. This is Alice. Alice is 21 years old, and she is one of the Hope Scholarship recipients from our sponsors. So she's a member of the Hope Scholarship group. And Alice, uh, what is your hope? What is your dream for yourself? I want to be a doctor. You want to be a doctor? Ah. When you graduate, you'll go into some uh, medical school. Well, we, we hope and pray that this happens for you, that it's God's will. So congratulations for being a Hope Scholarship recipient. What is your hope? What do you want to become? What is your dream? A reggae pastor. So very good. And you are a recipient of the Hope Scholarship from a sponsor in the United States. So we are very proud of you. Congratulations on being a Hope Scholarship. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Ribia, and she is the, uh, I think, 23 years old? Yes, 23 years old. I never went to school. You never went to school? Yeah, people from So this is the first time you've gone to a vocational school? Yeah. Sarah Harrington has sponsored her this past year for vocational training, for Hope Scholarship, and for her, her needs for education and for the Hope Home program. So Ruby, why don't you tell Sarah uh, something for, from you? I want to thank Tara for what she has done for me. She has helped me a lot. I'm so glad to meet you. Thank you. Ribia. <laughs> He's beautiful. Oh, Drew University, through its Shalom program, supplied two student interns, Claire Colcord and Christian Jabano, for the summer to help the local church identify ways to design revenue-producing enterprises. My hope is to get to know each one of you. Part of my work as a Shalom Zone intern was to build uh, a Shalom Zone team. They decided independently that one of their major goals for the program would be to continue to help the orphaned, vulnerable children in the area. This would include this Hope Homes program. It would funnel the money that this Shalom team is able to raise through other enterprises into the feeding and the care of the children in the neighborhood. The UMC Church, the center of the circle of the one kilometer area, which will become the Shalom Zone, is quite crucial to an outreach effort to get beyond their own walls, to really impact the community. What Shalom is all about is to be a community in contact with each other, working together to better aid the sustainability of the individual community. And beyond that, I hope we have a lot of fun together. Good deal? As part of my internship, I helped a local community in Mizuzu by improving their microenterprises, such as the United Methodist Women's Empowerment Group. This group focused on empowering several women by improving their sewing skills so they can create clothes and sell them in the local markets. I'm speaking on behalf of the women, United Methodist Women, as a pastor's wife. We have got a dream to develop and upgrade the lives of women in the church. Our core objective is to empower them so that they can I help the families when they know how to solve for selling. In our class here, we have got a few challenges. The first challenge is that we don't have enough uh, machines to take care of seven students. The next challenge is on fabric and um, other sandroom items. Yes. 
We thank God because he has used the UMC church to help us get into this training opportunity. Zuzu is a community development project that can be supported by the local community with its own resources, with its own assets brought to bear to sustain the work in the long term. That's the Mizuzu Shalom Zone approach. That's the model that we commend uh, for our network of communities of Shalom, national and international. This is Jen, Pastor Copeland's wife, ministering at the United Methodist Church in Zuz. Mumba, Mumba, Mumba. Here you go.